first deal. I mean, John did did show me how he wanted to play the part and worked at great length on trying to play for sympathy and all that sort of thing. And the thing was to make it not look like a cheap horror thing. We wanted to try and reproduce something approximating, but not an exact clone of the Elephant Man, right? Yeah. But you could take liberties. In other words, you, you you could create something which which was grotesque, but by the end of the film, you would find not too heavily mm. difficult to be able to sympathise with. We had no time for a start. That was problem number one. Problem number two was that we had to work out a way of, technically, a way of actually doing this, because as far as I know, no makeup had ever had quite such an enormous, enormously complicated build-up um, with such very thick areas, especially on the corner of the neck, where you'd normally make an edge, you couldn't make an edge, and so on and so forth. So technically it was very difficult, just for a start. So my problem was to work out how the hell to do it. We had a cast um, which was a death mask of the original Elephant Man and w on which to base things. We also had his skeleton. We had photographs of the, of the four or five or so of the original photographs that actually existed. I had some references from the London Hospital of what the man actually looked like and we based it upon that. Um, these were our actual working photographs, incidentally. That was presumably when he was a boy. Um, we're not sure whether that's a photograph or that's a drawing. It's rather hard to tell the difference. And these are the only, among the only photographs that were ever taken. This must have been taken just before he died anyway. I must say, it wasn't in an emporium like this either. <laughs> because when um, Chris had his studio when we were doing that, it was a little, a little tiny sort of basement, really, wasn't that's it? That's right, it was a little the, basement. It was... The old uh, Kent Road. <laughs> known by one of my colleagues as the Grotto. <laughs> <laughs> we worked on the teeth. I worked with wax and continually altering them until we got exactly the right look to the John's own mouth and, and with something that he could actually speak with, because the problem, he had to be able to talk and, and yeah. do all the rest of it. Actually, we even got a bit of the twist in time. That's right, yes, we twisted as much as we could. We twisted his own mouth around. It's your own mouth? Yeah, yeah from the inside. Mm -hmm. we, we twisted it and, and maneuvered his own anatomy inside his head around as much as was possible. Then when we did that, when I'd made the teeth, then we did the plaster cast of the head with the teeth in, okay? And from that, I then had to sculpt the whole thing. Well, John, how did you learn to speak? Or did you all think of it yourself? Or did you have somebody to help you? No, I, uh, I did think of that myself. There's, there's, there's some parts that, that uh, dawn on you very quickly, the way in which you want to play it. And um, fortunately, the voice that I'd... I'd I always imagined he was going to speak with was not uh, impeded by the teeth or the makeup. Um, the problems with the makeup, of course, were the, were the problems that it could break up quite easily because uh, a lot of it goes to nothing, particularly inside of the lips and things like that. So you had to exercise an enormous amount of personal economy, uh, that's the only way I can put it really, during the day, for it to last. <clears throat> But um, the preparation of the role, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't remember that being any any great difficulty. The, the difficulty was was merely being able to last the days. And uh, on the first day of the makeup, I, I must say, I rang up my wife at the time, my late wife, and uh, she said, and I said to her, I said, well, I think they finally found a way of making me not enjoy films. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> Strangely enough, you get used to that, you adapt to it quite reasonably. And also with film, there is, there is light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know what you'd have to do if you did that for a television series, which you have a seven-year contract or something. I think then suicide might be in order. It should be right. There's no bits there. Yeah. Tucking the ear is important as well, I might yes. say, because yes. you've got this on now from... Well, this, this one went up here, didn't it? This went on the exact it. sequence we did. Yeah, that's, that's one cool. of the tricky bits, actually, obviously. Because it's, it's also got the lip on it, this, isn't it? Yeah. It tucks right underneath. That's right, the lip works in something like that. That fits on. And then this one, oops, fits up there. Mm -hmm. So, so if I can hold it down, you can keep my fingers out of the way because I'm a rough idea of what it actually looked like. And all those ends have to be 
if you brushed away to nothing. more to the profile if you look more to your left they'll get that's it that's, that's good I started, I went in at half past four. We used to sit around and have coffee for that bit. In the morning? Yeah. In the morning, yeah. Start makeup at five o'clock. We finished the makeup at 12 noon. Then we'd shoot from 12 noon with the running buffet for everybody else, not for me, because I couldn't eat. The last thing I had was at nine o'clock in the morning, which is two raw eggs and some orange juice mixed up together through a straw. But uh, so we'd shoot from 12 till 10.30 at night, and then it would take another hour and a half to get it off. And we did that every other day. And the day in between, um, we'd rehearse in civvies. Isn't it right that after this film, or actually because of this film, the Academy of Award of Makeup was being invented? Well, that's invented. perfectly true, yes, yes. Up to that time, there had been a campaign for an award for makeup by the Hollywood local, the Hollywood local union, that is, that dealt with some of the uh, uh, bigger makeup names in Los Angeles. And they had been campaigning for some considerable time, a number of years, seven, eight years, or perhaps more even, for an award for makeup, which in the early days perhaps wasn't always warranted. Sometimes, such as the Charles Lawton Hunchback of Notre Dame, or something like that, certainly that warrants an award. But of course, the average feature film never really had that much in the way of makeup. However, um, the Elephant Man really did drive it home to the Academy that things should change since they were giving awards for other departments that weren't always perhaps quite so um, important to the success of a film, such as sound or whatever. Are there any plans of working together again in the future? Well, nobody's offered us a job together no. currently, as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're open to offers. <laughs> Uh, depends on what it is, though. I'm very fond of Chris, but if I get a film and they say, oh, we've got Chris Tucker as the makeup man, I'm immediately suspicious. <laughs> well, I guess when you I think he, if he was wise, he'd run a mile. <laughs> <laughs> because um, it's, it's the preparation as much as anything else. It's not... It's the matter of the, the fact you've got to come into the studio early. You have to get up earlier than anybody else. You have to come into the studio before anybody else. You have to sit down and go through things that nobody else has to go through every day. Um, and no matter how much of a, an enthusiast for makeup, such as Laurence Olivia or anybody else for that matter, are, the, the novelty wears thin. And I think John realizes that. I'm sure he well, does. I mean, as I, uh, I think I said before, you know, you don't very often get, I mean, very rarely in your life you're going to have something which you're going to have seven hours of makeup as a standard thing. <clears throat> no, I'd, indeed, I'd love to work with Chris again if there was something which was, uh, um, I don't know, some odd nose or something. I wouldn't <laughs> mind that. That would be too bad. That would be bearable. The point about all this, though, is that it is an accessory and it's, it's supposed to be an aid. To the actor, it's not there to be seen for its own sake. It's there purely. It has come as a long way from the from the makeup people used to use, of course. This sort of makeup. Oh yes, yes, yes. It's, it's getting quite well developed now, you could say. <laughs>